Hey guys, and welcome to a new episode, one that is appearing without video today because my silly camera is broken or it's not broken, but I don't know what's up with it. Anyway, um, today we're talking about how to prevent a slow metabolism. Now, I, I don't know if you guys follow me, follow me over on Instagram, but I do speak about it a lot. I, I'm, you know, I'm always talking about how, um, you know, if you're trying to avoid slowing your metabolism, you should prevent doing group cardio classes or running. For example, I've spoken about it a lot on, um, this YouTube channel of mine as well. And when I talk about it, I tend to talk about your body adapting as if this is something that you don't want it to do. But um, just so you guys know, there are good adaptations as well and um, ones that are, you know, quite complementary. And there are also adaptations that tend to work against one another, okay? So if your body is adapting to be more efficient at endurance and stamina, which is the result from doing cardio like running or circuit training, that means that your body is trying to um, be more efficient with energy. So, you know, you do the same amount of work for less calorie burn, okay? Now, to help with this, your muscles will shrink to become more efficient, okay? Because you don't need a lot of strength for endurance and stamina. So therefore, you don't need lots of muscle. And a byproduct of less muscle is that you are lighter and then your body burns less calories to make you more efficient, aka a slower metabolism. So if you're trying to get stronger and build more muscle, that's completely opposite to what you want your body to do, okay? If you're trying to get stronger, what you're essentially asking your body to do is build bigger muscles, which has a side effect of becoming not very efficient with energy so your body will actually burn more calories, aka a faster metabolism. Now, if you're training for strength and muscle, for example, and you're training cardio for fitness, which is endurance and stamina, for say a race, or maybe it's a fitness competition where you need to complete um, something like a long row followed by 20 box jumps and then a sprint at the end and God knows whatever else, you are actually going to compromise your strength, okay? Basically, what happens when you're training for both adaptations at one time, you're getting a little bit of improvement in both areas, so you'll get a little bit of endurance and you'll get a little bit of muscle growth, but nowhere near as if you had just focused on one. It, I think I have used this analogy before somewhere, but it is actually like driving with the accelerator and the brake on at the same time. You probably get where you want to, but it's gonna be super slow, bumpy, times of little progress, but sticking with it, you will eventually get there. So if your goal is to have stamina and endurance and you want to win a competition that requires you to be super duper fit, then you're going to have to be okay with sacrificing your potential to build muscle and strength and a faster metabolism. You know, it's one way or another, okay? So we've shown the link between needing muscle for speeding up your metabolism and um, what negative effects, um, what negative impacts, sorry, um, doing cardio will have on your metabolism or slowing down your metabolism. Is there a time that you may need some cardio or stamina to help with your mother muscle growth? Growth, not gross. <laughs> yes, there is. And this is one of the two times that I'll inject some cardio into a client's program, okay? If your cardiovascular endurance is holding you back from being able to perform your set of squats or your deadlifts or another big exercise, this can be a good indication that a little more endurance will actually help you with your muscle growth, okay? But before you go running this afternoon on a long 10K run, there's actually a little bit more to it, okay? The absolute best type of cardio for this is HIT. Now, make sure you listen closely for the next minute or so. Firstly, it does emulate the type of training that you're doing with your strength workouts, as in short periods of high input followed by a period of rest. And secondly, true hit, now note that I say true hit, is less likely to switch you over into endurance mode, okay? Just know that there is a difference between what hit actually is meant to be and what it is often marketed as at your local um, high intensity training studio okay I've popped I've yeah I've actually popped a link um, below 
um, to a hit video that I did that actually goes into depth about how it works. But to summarize, true hit is, let's say, 20 or 30 second bursts of absolute maximum output followed by heart rate measured rest. Okay, now this will depend on your fitness level and your age. But as an example, your your um, looking to get your heart rate back down to say 100 beats per minute, then another maximum output for 20 or 30 seconds and you repeat for no longer than 20 to 25 minutes, okay? The 45 minute sweat sesh hit classes are really more endurance classes and they're not true hit, okay? Basically though, you just need to decide what it is that you want most, okay? Do you want to have a little bit of everything and not be super great at one thing in particular? If we take, say, a CrossFit athlete as just a pure example, they need to be really good at everything. And the ones that are good at everything as a whole are genetically not at the top of one class, right? And the ones that are usually excellent in strength will lack in another area like endurance runs or the long swims, okay? Now, the athletes that you see on TV competing at the CrossFit Games are genetically the 1% of the 1%, so please don't beat yourself up if you struggle to look like one of these guys or girls. There's very few people that can um, genetically get to this level regardless of whatever they do. Now, it is possible to have a little bit of everything. If you're looking to have, you know, a healthy but fast metabolism to, you know, allow you to enjoy life and eat, say, 2,000 or 2,500 calories, um, which is what I do, weight or resistance training will get you there. You know, utilize a little bit of heat if you're running out of puff in your squats. If you're looking to compete in CrossFit, you're going to have to compromise somewhere though. Personally, I was stuck on a 1500 calorie um, merry-go-round. I couldn't eat more um, at all, really. I couldn't look at food without it sticking to me. And I use the method that I've just explained now um, to get up to 2400 calories at the moment. I'm actually pushing for 2700 calories in the coming months, which I'm very excited about. And I'm still reasonably lean, you know. In fact, in the last few weeks, I have definitely gotten a little bit leaner. I'm currently growing muscle quite aggressively, which I love. And when it gets closer to summer, I can drop 500 calories to enter a deficit and, you know, be losing fat while eating 2,200 calories a day. I haven't done that before, you know. Um, To me, that fits really well with where I'm at and my lifestyle. So guys, that's it for another episode. Once again, apologies um, for the lack of video, um, but I'm sure you guys will survive. Until next week, guys, have a great week.